you are tired. You have a discernment issue of not knowing what you're fighting. It's leaving you tired and exhausted because you are trying to fight something that you were never meant to fight. Listen, God is not obligated to help you with a battle that is not yours. You're picking the weeds and fighting their battles when God only gave you the oil that's for your assignment. You need the discernment to recognize what is your battle. And when you come to see that that situation or those people aren't your fight, you just have to say it's not personal, it's purposeful. You see, purpose fixes problems. Before God placed you in his life, he examined every detail of the problems that you will face to plant the problem-solving anointing in your spirit. So if it's a constant issue or a constant bump with this person or the situation you're in, you need to examine and see this is probably not the fight for you. You're forcing something that was never meant for you. Sometimes when someone has something to say to Jesus, he wouldn't say nothing, but other times he would. Why is that though? Because Jesus, he knew when to speak up. Get into prayer and ask God to show you what your fight is. Remember to trust what God is doing for your life. Stop speaking back to your thoughts through the carnal perspective. Meaning you're just having a conversation back and forth with the enemy saying, oh, that's not true. Or you're drowning with the thoughts of, I can't take this anymore. Second Corinthians 10, 4 through 7 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. Then it goes down a list of what the weapons we fight with can do. It pulls down strongholds. It casts down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Literally start examining your thoughts to see if they line up with God's word. If it's thoughts of lust, fear, greed, um, any evil thought, it says bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You see, we're not helpless over our thoughts. We can choose to stop any thought that is not of Christ. And if you try to say that you can't, that's only a lack of faith from you. Because if you know the God that we serve, which it says specifically in his word that he is mighty, then we can use our authority in Christ to cast down these thoughts. And it all connects to Ephesians 6, 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Remember, this fight over the attacks you get hit with are not what you see in front of you. If there's always that one person that's always coming at you a wrong way, you need to pray for them. Because there are spiritual attachments where they are attached to these people and they are reacting off of it. And if you are receiving thoughts that you know that does not sound like nothing that God would say, you need to rebuke it and speak to that spirit. Whether it's the spirit of depression, pain, guilt, anger. You make those thoughts come into obedience by telling those thoughts no. You need to hit those demons in the enemy with the word of God because when the devil says you can't, you say I can. And when the devil tries to say that you're this, you tell the devil no, I'm not that because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world in Jesus name. God is telling you right now the struggle is no longer. Listen because I'm finna preach to somebody. Romans 6, 6 through 8 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. It says our old self. When you come to Christ, you are born again in spirit. Romans 12, 2 speaks about not having a conformed mind, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. Meaning, when you came to Christ, there was a switch in your spirit where the Holy Spirit came in to renew you more into becoming like Christ. And verse 7 speaks because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. When Jesus went on the cross, he took that depression you have, that addiction in Jesus' name, that unforgiveness you're still holding on to, that bitterness in Jesus' name, I rebuke that. It says in verse 8, now if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We believe. Death no longer has dominion over our king. We serve the most high, the one who conquered the grave and set us all free from the snares of death itself. If you are free in Christ, why are you walking as if you are still in the struggle of sin? Renew your mind and see like Christ. Tell Jesus to give you eyes to see and ears to hear when you pray. Because you are no longer in bondage anymore. You do not have to listen to any lie that the devil tries to attack you with. The devil is a lie. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus and cast those demons back to the pit of hell. Know your authority in Christ and stop letting the devil walk all over you.